Your friends, as we begin worship, I invite you to stand as you are able and to face the crowd. Welcome to worship this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Gary, and I'll be leading worship with you this morning. Welcome also to those of us who are joining us online on Zoom. Please, everyone, be aware there is a live microphone and a live camera up here, so keep that in mind if you choose to walk in front of it or to have a conversation. I invite you to join with us in confession and forgiveness as we begin worship. God is here, and God sees through every defense that fools the world. Since we cannot hide from God, there is nothing left to do but to be honest with each other and humble before God. So in humility, we confess our sins. God, we have acted helpless, even when you call us to action. We have resisted your truth, even when our lives were exhausted. We have behaved as though we were alone, even when you were beside us. God, we have believed we were dying even when you helped us grow. God knows we can never undo our sins. We cannot ignore painful history as though it does not affect us today. Yet before our very first mistake, God perfected the plan for salvation, and that salvation comes to each of us today. His name is Jesus, and you are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. This forgiveness is total, no sign of your old life remains. And if God has moved beyond your sin, you have no reason to return to it again. We are here. We are one in Christ. No blemish remains. We are gifted by grace. Thanks be to God. We are called to serve. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, 327, Through the Night of Doubt and Sorrow.
Change can be small, evolutionary, atomic, a crumbled resistance, a slightly different direction, a fresh idea in the middle of the night. For God, change can rain down like a tempest, a flood in every street that sweeps into our lives with energy that does not yield or listen. God is urgently waiting to finally survive. God, we have been waiting for you too. Yet you often arrive before we notice, in the place we did not expect, in the word we did not hear. Do not be afraid, your angels always say, right before you change a life. You are here to change this place. We are not afraid. Peace to you and welcome. From the God who disposes with trouble like chaff, the Savior who forgives the deepest wrong, the Spirit who repairs what is broken. Peace to you and welcome. Um, Let us continue with our curiosity. <laughs> the fourth chapter see the day is coming burning like an oven when all the arrogant and all evil doers will be stubble the day that comes shall burn them up says the lord of hosts so that it will leave them neither root nor branch but for you who revere my name the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings the word of the lord thanks be god Sing you a song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, who is right hand and holy on have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight. 
from 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some were speaking about the temple. I was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must be first take place, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and siblings, by relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. But you will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, dear friends. Well, for this next bit, you may want to have something to write with and something to write on if it's available to you. Your phone will do. You're not submitting anything. 
There are cards for you, and there may be offering cards you can take notes on. And this is not required, it's just something you might want. Okay? You'll know when it happens. So just be aware. I don't want you shuffling through your purse during a certain to be distracted from missing so many things distract us. Now let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everything okay over there? Just, good Just making sure we're all right. Okay. So, what do you want to do with that gospel lesson? Are you excited? I'm excited. Nah, that sounds like a really exciting text. All will be thrown down, Jesus says. It speaks to my love of uh, melodrama, let's say. And it astonishes me the way these texts that show up, even texts like this, you know, really hard, disturbing, weird, obscure texts. Last time I preached it was in 2019. But they keep ringing in our ears, right? The difference between our work and God's work and the difference between our work and God's work and what every one of us spends way too much time and energy and money on. So much of what we're doing in these confusing times involves getting involved in things that are not the work. Because the work given to us to do by God is not necessarily our jobs or whatever our pet project may be, or even a massive undertaking like restoring and expanding a temple or a church. The work is what God calls us to do, what God has given us our daily bread today for, so that we can do our work today. So when I talk to you about the work, I mean the work of following Jesus. I mean the work of being the church in this world. That's the work that is being talked about in 2 Thessalonians today. This is the work Jesus describes in our gospel reading as the opportunity to testify. The work given to us while the arrogant and the evildoers are burned up like stubble in that day which is coming, that day of God's healing revolution. But that burning up and that tumbling down of temples is not the work God gives to us. Our work is small, it's quiet. Only the circumstances beyond our control thrust our work into the spotlight. And our reading from Malachi, the work is revering the name of God, trusting that God is who God has shown us in that saving work. God's work of justice, God's overthrow of the rich, the powerful, and the arrogant. In 2 Thessalonians, the work is generic because it refers to a community which has lots of different iterations of the work. Because the work is different between day laborers and farmers and ministers and preachers, which, by the way, aren't necessarily the same thing. The work is not earning extra money. The work is not grinding ourselves up in endless labor. The work is not a system that crushes the oppressed and disabled. The work is what is necessary, what is possible is the place where those things meet, necessary, and possible. And the work for me is not the work for you. God gives the work. God calls all our work together into harmony, despite the fact that it's not all the same exact task. And the work deserves support. So our second reading mentions that Paul had every right to be supported by the community he was serving. He simply wanted to model a diligent generosity, not burdening others without reason. Thankful for the work to which he was called, he went about it abundantly. But those who keep themselves busy while ignoring the work 
ought not to eat. They are choosing to ignore the work. They are doing what is easy. The task which asks no real change of them. No trust of others. No dependence. No faith in God. They may be doing a great deal, sure. That doesn't mean that they aren't idle. Only the work matters. As an aside, Luther had to do with this problem. You know what he wrote? If your children are not willing to learn Christianity, then they ought not to be fed by Christians. So get out of the same Thessalonians. You don't want to be Christian? Then Christians should be feeding you. Now, I don't think he ever actually had anyone starved on his watch. But the idea is it's inseparable. You want the community to support you, then you're a part of the community. That means you do the work, whatever that may look like for you. Because only the work matters. Temples will fall down. Congregations will close. Nations will go to war. China, Russia, and North Korea, they will continue their antagonisms, at least for the foreseeable future. But their aggressions have little to do with the work, the here and the now. Unless, of course, you're talking about how we vote or what we might write in a letter or email to a congressman. The work has little to do with something as grandiose as saving a congregation as though we could, or with convincing other people to unmake choices they have made as though we could. You ever try to argue somebody out of something when their main mind's made up? It's not fun. Or with judging the choices that others have made as though we have any excuse when we do the very same things and yet judge others. None of that is the work. None of that really matters. Busying ourselves with those kinds of things, that's idleness. God has called us to the work. Testify. Be together. Support one another. Be generous. Testify, Jesus says. Testify when you are persecuted and dragged from the authorities and the world is ending. Because make no mistake, for the disciples, the idea of the destruction of this temple that was still being completed after 80 years, that was a world-ending thought. And when the temple was destroyed in 70 CE, that was the end of a world. And it was the beginning of something totally new, something frightening, something strange. The work, then, was to testify, to bear discipleship so that others would have no choice but to notice. The work was not to save the temple or to save the religious institutions. The work was not to pay people off or to keep our heads down or to make sure the bills got paid. The work in crisis is to carry on faithful living as a community in Christ until the powers of the world do come up. And then the work is to test that. Now, understand, the work of discipleship is not glamorous, it is not profitable, it does not match with the values of our society. We have been taught, we have been discipled to have very different perspectives and habits from what God expects. We think in task-oriented terms. We look for solutions, even when we don't have an understanding of what the problem is or even of what we want to accomplish. We think in terms of measurable results. We turn people into money in our minds, calling them customers or giving units. Part of the work is unlearning toxic behaviors that we have been taught. The behaviors on which the whole world seems to run. I've got to tell you guys the real story, truth. I've been told most of my life, the church isn't the real world. School isn't the real world. Seminary is not the real world. Being pastor is not the real world. I'll tell you the truth. The real world is not that thing out there. The thing that turns you all into numbers. 
and a product. That is not the real world. The real world is not the real world of statistics and money and political parties and overworked, underpaid citizens increasingly being corporatized and commodified. The real world is the world that God has made, the kingdom of God. And the real work is the gospel, love, generosity, compassion, empathy, relationship, honesty. So, take a moment. Talk to God silently, if you can, quietly if not, about the work, about the work you have been called to do. Not what you're paid to do, not what you have to do to save something or someone. Not all the busy work the world gives you so that you ignore the real work, the hard work, the tough work. Focus on that real work God is calling you to in your heart and your mind. Summarize it to yourself in a few sentences. Write it down if that helps. Maybe make a mission statement out of it. Answer this question. Or ask God this question. What is your work? Got it? Uh -huh. yeah. What's your work? Preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Now that's Francis of Assisi. Was that correct? I think that was out of Francis of Assisi. Did you hear him? Preach the gospel when necessary, use words. You, by the way, do not have to share, but if you really want to, you're welcome to. Somebody else have something they wanted to share? Start volunteering at the hospital, so maybe I can get a job at the hospital again. Mm. See what happens. But one step and then another. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so often the work is one step, right? It's not going to be a five year plan necessarily. It could just be the next right thing to quote a movie that I like from Disney, who does do good work even when they don't want to sometimes. Anyone else want to share? Tree. Everyone the same. Mm -hmm. Be kind to all. Mm -hmm. Do a good turn daily. Mm -hmm. Help others at all times. Mm -hmm. Be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And with that. It's almost like you're, you're involved in the Boy Scouts. So it's you're, like scouting. I can hear a couple of scouts. That's a trustworthy lawyer. Can you, yeah, can you scout now? He's there. Can you scout now? He's there. And that's what you can do. It's fire. Fire. Life for this. Yeah. But still, and, and changing. Young folks to understand that, which is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be an entire that could be an entire mission statement for a life's work right there, helping young people understand the lessons I've learned in life, the lessons given to me. That's like the whole thing right there, right? It's, I don't know if we saw sixty minutes last week. I did not. 
it's an interesting say that there was one gentleman talking about phones, technology, yeah, and how I guess with TikTok, TikTok is his guide to the youth. It's 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 pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, tech, there, just because the technology is useful does not mean that, that it is put to good uses, right? <laughs> so that's important to know. So, so, and that's something we have to learn, right? And help each other learn is good habits, good patterns, good ways of interacting with each other and with our world. Yes, that's absolutely a whole bevy of things. Anyone else want to share? Linda? I would say that my job is healing the world and fixing the world. Healing and fixing the world. That's a huge task right there, right? And of course, you know, we have only so much power we can do. Because <laughs> the son of righteousness will ride with you in its wings, right? That's out of Malachi today. That's the hot field, right? God gives the healing processes of the ecology and the economy and our bodies, but we can help one another. That's why God made us as part of those systems, right? Others. Love your enemy. I think of this uh, paying it forward. Paying it forward. Paying forward that what? Whatever, you know, good comes to me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I share that with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, forwarding the goodness that you receive. Yeah. What do you do with the evil you receive? <laughs> heavy sigh. That's right. That's right. Heavy sigh. Right? That, that, that takes so much energy and strength. That can be the work. Just say, I'm not going to pass on the evil, the pain, the hurt done to me, but I'm going to pass on the good and love that's given to me. That changes the world right there, right? That's the kind of stuff we're talking about, whether it's very concrete steps that might lead to larger plans, whether it's very general goals, whether it's a general principle of life, whether it's a whole system of ideas that interlock to create kind of a way of life. That's the work. My work. Reclaim and renew the language, ideas, and practices of Christianity to help rather than harm human lives. Ask Zoom people. Oh, yeah. Is there anyone Zoom wanted to share? I only see two. I, I think, I think it's mm -hmm. covered. I, I was saying, oh, I didn't even think about it. This is not mandatory sharing. Oh, somebody else? Yes. The speed of ceremony to hang is this way. This is a purpose for the technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Learning, learning to to love God and our neighbor, right? That's the big loser thing. Love of God and love of neighbor, right? That's the big loser thing. Um, why? Because it leads to fulfillment, not just for them, but for us, right? It fills us, right? It's important. I don't want to cut anyone off. So yeah, you don't have to share yours. Maybe you're not ready to share yours. Maybe the work for you is to get that mission statement clearer in your own head. Or maybe for you, the work is to make that mission statement a prayer, as, as we just heard. Maybe it's maybe the work is different. Maybe the work is, I need to figure out my relationship with God and what I think about this whole thing. Maybe I need to study the scriptures for a year when I have time. Maybe I need to end something that I'm doing that harms me or my neighbor. Maybe the work is the real difficult work healing yourself from something you've never really allowed yourself to heal from, never allowed yourself to go through. Because healing is hard work, it's draining, it takes resources and time and dedication and energy, and it can hurt. Maybe the work is grieving. All that's okay. Hear me now. The work is not competition. No one has better work than anyone else. There is no comparison to your work and mine. God calls us all to our work. God wants us to do our work together as community, helping, supporting, encouraging one another. God wants us to do our work together. That's why God has called us here together to help one another. Six years ago, this Sunday, after the election of 2016, I quoted our bishop to this assembly. She said this many times. We have work to do, dear church. 
And of course, we still do. Christ calls us to the work of anti-racism, to the work of regular prayer and study, to the work of gathering together for worship and word and sacrament, to the work of building relationships internally and externally, of testifying in the world around us whenever we are given the opportunity. It's a lot. Everything we've named, it's a lot. That's okay. The work's not a sprint. There's no race. You're never going to finish. Finishing is a point. Hopefully you'll achieve some goals, especially when they're very specific and time-constrained and measurable. But that's not the point. The work is never done. The work just changes depending on what's happened to us, around us, in us. Completion isn't the point. Faith is the point. Hope is the point. Love is the point. Because those are the things that sustain us, along with that daily bread that we need. And these are the things God gives to us, given to us for free, whether we do the work or not, by a God who calls us to this work of bringing life, life to each other, to ourselves, to our neighborhood, to our world. May your work be blessed. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for participating.
church is his name in its work as we confess the work of God in Christ Jesus. Let us proclaim that work of God in the Nicene Creed found in your liturgy. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things be. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and he was there. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the fathers. Who with the Father and the Son in his word of the Lord the Father, who has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic Zapsolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United with God's saints across time and place. We pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. We especially pray for St. Mark in Morristown, Central New Brunswick, Bethany and Palmyra, Mission Lutherana Reconciliation and Pensacki, and Southeast Michigan Synod and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, as the northern hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest in new life. Help us care for what you have made, Lord, Lord in your mercy. See our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. End unrest and war, and protect the people in danger, especially those in Ukraine, Russia, Iran, and Namibia. Lord, in your mercy, see you Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially Sydney, Bob, Leah, Bruce, Bob, Nancy, Bonnie, Jesse, John. Lord, in your mercy, see by the prayer. Uniting God, unite this assembly in a shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, why do all grief for loved ones who have died and secure in us the hope shared by all the saints triumphant, especially Elizabeth of Hungary, comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, grace of God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Mm -hmm. I invite you as you are comfortable and able to share a sign of Christ's peace. If not a handshake or hug, let a bow or peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Dear friends, I invite you to be seated at this time.
As the altar is to be made ready for offertory song, a few brief words. Uh, communion will be distributed from the front of the font. Everyone who is baptized is welcome to commune here as they desire. If you are not able to make it up the aisle, then let me know or let the usher know. Uh, that's right in the back. And he'll make sure that I get to you. I will dip the wafer into the wine and hand it to you into your open palm. If you do not wish to receive wine, simply say no wine. If you are gluten intolerant, let me know. I think we do have some gluten wafers available. Are there questions about the distribution of communion? Hearing none, then further announcements will be made after the distribution of the sacrament. Let us now, oh, I'm sorry, word about offering. If you would like to make a contribution to the mission of the congregation, we have a chest in the rear of the name. You can mail something at our street address. You can use Vanco, which is on your app store, or set up direct deposit with our financial secretary. Uh, if you have questions about that, see me. If you'd like to do something in terms of uh, labor in the ministry and helping us in something that we're doing, we'd love to hear from you. Note well that on the 16th, we have a dinner church experience for Thanksgiving. That is being offered at 5.30 on Wednesday here in the parish hall. If you are available or would like to donate food, show up and move chairs and tables, show up and be an usher, show up and help with a uh, dishwasher, or do anything related to that and are not sure how, see myself or Linda Bacon, they'll be happy to coordinate with you. Okay, so that's a special offering announcement. But if you don't know what you can do to help, but you want to, speak with me. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Lord's Supper, let us sing our offertory, God of the Starlight and Moon. Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, 
through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Savor the food while it lasts. 
past. We cling to love before we step out of reach. And we pray that God will give us each day the blessing we share in this place. So we pray, as Jesus taught us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Dear friends, I invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, deify your spirit in love, sanctify your body in service, nourish your mind in wonder, and preserve your being in everlasting life. Amen. The meal has ended. Now let the remembering begin. Remember you have met God in this place. Remember that no person who meets God can ever be the same. We pray. Holy, Holy Jesus, Jesus, you have called us. We, we have, have listened. You, you have invited us. We took our place at the table. You, you have sat with us what we might follow you. Now there is nowhere else we can go because you alone are the others. Immediately we call on worship. There are some refreshments in the Harrow Hall. You are welcome to go there and to chat with us. Uh, you will see many announcements in your newsletter. As I've already mentioned, the most significant is Wednesday at 5.30. We have a dinner church experience for Thanksgiving. That's here at 5.30 this coming Wednesday. The following Wednesday, the 23rd, is for Thanksgiving. There will be no Wednesday programming because some of us will be traveling. I hope that you are all safe and well in the upcoming holiday. Next Sunday, of course, we meet again for Bible study at 9 and for worship at 10. And that will be the final Sunday of the church here, Christ the King. But, uh, and following that worship service, there will be worship and music meeting. And the following Monday, that is the 21st, there will be a council meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Other, other announcements for the good of the community. Oh, a word of Thanksgiving, because I know that Diane's not here, but she's not say this. Thank you to everyone who donated and came out in support of Socktober and our packing party last week. It was a fabulous experience. Thanks to those of you who were there who, were, who could donate or who supported us with your prayers. We are hoping to have another of those events sometime after the new year. So please keep your eyes peeled for opportunities to serve and to gather together. Now I invite you to bow your heads to receive the blessing of God. May the blessing of the eternal God be upon us, and upon our work and worship. God's light to guide us, God's presence to strengthen us, God's love to unite us now and always. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn, How Firm a Foundation.
God, let us be your servants wherever this road goes. God, you could not have judged us, but you chose us. You have made us worthy so we might speak your words. God, you alone guide us down the path that leads to life. Every other path is no longer a path for us. Go in peace, sir, the lowly. Thanks be to God. Thank you.